what we wanted to do at the end of this was uh, we gave you uh, feedback forms uh, at the beginning, uh, which you probably should have thrown away by now. Uh, hopefully you'll fill those in, perhaps leave them on the, on the desk here on the way out. However, what, what we are interested in is how we take this forward, what the next step is, um, and whether or not people would be um, interested in, in various things. And, um, could I just, I mean, I've, we've got a number of things down here, but could we just have a, a show of hands? It's not a commitment that you have to do this, we just get give us an idea of what things might be worth thinking about developing. Um, so who would be interested in, in a guided visit to some of these sites? Yeah, okay, that's fairly positive. Uh, who would be, uh, like to be involved in any excavations that might take place from these sites? Well, that's positive as well, right, okay. Um, the other thing we wouldn't be about was, was workshops. Clearly, you know, we, we try to outline what's going on in the area, but uh, particularly as, as hopefully our understanding and work develops, what we could do is organize perhaps smaller gatherings of people who look in more detail at particular events at particular locations. Is that something that people would be interested in, or is that too, too intense? No? Hands? Right, okay. Um, right, this one was getting really ambitious. Coach to a really civil war locations in the Tees Valley. Who'd like to sit on a coach with Phil and be taken around the, the battle <laughs> site? Come on, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <amazing>. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Right, okay. As I said, there would have to be a small charge because if Phil's not charging his time, we still have to put the trip across the coach. And then even more ambitious, who would like to sit on a bus and go around each of all locations in the whole of North East England? Yeah, okay, there's one for you, Jeff, as well. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you to fill your forms in, but just from our point of view, that's very useful to get that, that level of enthusiasm. Um, as, as you know, I've got the email addresses of most people. If, you have, if I haven't got your email address, please let me have it. And uh, we can keep you in a loop and, and start thinking about some of these these suggestions. Um, can I suppose that with the floor? I mean, has anybody A got any questions or B got any, any comments you'd like to make? Jeff, you? Sorry, I just want to chime on the end of that, uh, and then I've got ten more. Um, in terms of things to do, I know one of the things we found in the trust, and we do a lot of community projects, we tend to try and keep them fairly <coughs> small, based on a village or a location for a specific thing. But certainly picking up on something that Phil said and went there, I mean, there is, there is, there's, there isn't an interpretation of that in the arm near the bridge. There clearly should be. There should probably be something in Pierce Bridge from something in <coughs> And we found if you, if you can engage with a wider group of people, but also pull in local people, and set yourself some limited objectives, like let's get an interpretation out by the bridge and yard, um, that works really well. And certainly, you know, the trust would, um, it's something we do, and we would, you know, come and show the fire for the burden in making that happen. Not being terribly local, but I've heard people who want to speak in front of me and want to look at their saying things which you've then hurriedly written down. So you've very quickly written down what these people are saying. It's quite clear there's a stock of local knowledge around from the people in this room. Is it worthwhile trying to widen that to the wider community and simply say, what do you know about it? Yeah, uh, by all means. Uh, I mean, the corollary of, of me having your email addresses is most of you, I think, have got mine. Um, and you know, Tease Archaeology is, is quite happy to ask that as a central location for people putting information in, obviously, people to talk as well. So, yeah, and, and as, as part of MTG, we're doing a series of community projects you know, where hopefully we'll draw that information in as well. But no, I mean, we, we are interested in getting any information, I think, um, whilst, you know, Phil knows a heck of a lot, there's still a heck of a lot we don't know about the area and what's going on. And I think particularly, we haven't looked for the physical evidence before, but I mean, that is a, you know, you know, the documentary evidence that has been there has been looked at for some, for some while, but the physical evidence is something we haven't really set out to look for. So we'll be looking for any suggestions, I think, about where there may be physical evidence of one kind or another that relates to the Civil War. Um, we're, we're very interested also in, in portable collections as well, obviously arms and armour, but any 17th century collections, because eventually when we do the North East turned upside down, it is my intention not just to do the battles and the military bit, but I would like to put some social history context in, the women, the children, you know, daily life. So if you know of collections, collectors, 
I'd be very grateful if you put me in touch with them. Uh, just to give you an example, I was talking to a, a museum colleague in Newcastle the other day, and she said, have you seen Thomas Fairfax's boots? No, where are they? Well, Thomas Fairfax's descendant lives, or did live, uh, north, north of the Tyne, uh, and she, she went to his house and stuck in the corner with his day-to-day -day Wellingtons and other, you know, his green wellies and his hunters and whatever, in the corner were these leather uh, uh, bucket top boots belonging to Thomas Fairfax. Uh, uh, she still hasn't sent me the name of the house or place where she saw them. <coughs> they should go to the museum in summer and not to the so anything like that, any, any, any strange objects. Um, there's, there's a book on the back there about the, the, the Siege of York. Um, and at the time that book was written, there was a settle in, in Harem, a village to the north of York, uh, which had carved on it uh, portraits of the parliamentary commanders of the Siege of York. That settle has disappeared from the Sun Inn in Harem. Nobody knows where it's gone. Um, could I suggest people read the autobiography of Mrs. Thornton? It's Thirty Society. Uh, she was living at Kirklington during the Civil War. And it is an excellent, even, even down to the fact that the school kids came out of York and watched the battle going on. Uh, it is probably the best piece of literature there is about the Civil War from somebody, um, as far as the sort of domestic side, every side really. And it's, uh, it's on the internet. It's, uh, I think if you, you can Google it. Mrs. Thornton's autobiography. Thank you. Anybody else anything what they'd like to know? Yeah. Sorry, I, I've just been reminded. Um, could we give a quick plug for a trust event tomorrow? Bruce, yeah, sure. Tomorrow I'm going to the filming place for the syndicate, but not really. Hazelwood Hall, which is off the A64 between Tadcaps and Leeds. They seem to be getting very interested in history. They're doing a medieval history day there. Um, Terry and I are going to represent Buckfield Trust and run a stall there, and hopefully we'll do lots of new members. If you're probably going to want to get out tomorrow, Hazelwood Hall, just off the A64, on the road towards Tadcaps. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Okay. Anything else? Okay.